Transit Arts. Okay, so for this video, we're going to be decorating and writing in our inventor's log. And every day of the week, right after story time, you can open your inventor's log. And I like to fold it here. The pages, I like to fold them over in a very specific way so it makes them easier to flip through. So you guys have just heard the story, Ruby Finds a Worry. So I, I was thinking about my life and my worries and I kind of, I wasn't sure what kind of story I wanted to write, but I, I'm just going to go here on this, on this inside page and I'm just going to write a couple of things, little drafts, worries. You know, sometimes I worry I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes there's other types of worries. And maybe, maybe I don't want to make the story about worries. Who knows? It's sort of up to you guys. You can make the story about whatever you want it to make it about, but it is, a, it, it is an interesting thing to sort of reflect on the story that you, you heard earlier today. So most stories will have a, a couple of things. They'll have a setting, you know, where, the couple of W's, you know, who is involved, who, where, what happens, why it's going on, who, what, where, why, and how. Not technically a W, but important nonetheless. So I'm just going to go ahead and draft a couple of ideas. You know, where do I want my story to happen? Well, I kind of like fantasy. I like doing stuff that's kind of make-believe. So I think a really classic thing would be like a cloud, a cloud kingdom or something like that. A cloud kingdom. I think that would be kind of neat. Um, and I don't know who would live in a cloud kingdom, but maybe birds, you know, <laughs> maybe some birds live in that cloud kingdom and maybe, maybe they are worried. Maybe they're worried about the rain taking away their clouds and they have to do something to, uh, to, to keep their, <laughs> keep the clouds around. So maybe they do a rain dance. Who knows? I'm just coming up with some ideas on what the story could be about. And I have this little bit of paper here, but I know I have a where, I'm a cloud kingdom, who, the birds, what's happening. I'm not sure if I want to have it that the, the clouds are disappearing, but, uh, but that might be a good way to put it. Yeah, we're gonna put what happens is the clouds are gonna be disappearing. And the why might be because it's gonna rain. Going to rain. You guys know that clouds are made out of water? Whoa, that's pretty wild, huh? That white stuff floating around there, that's all water vapor. I was pretty amazed to find that out. And, uh, and how are they, this is the big part, how are they going to resolve that? How are they going to uh, make sure their clouds don't disappear? Maybe, maybe they're going to go into another cloud, you know? And maybe that's what my story is going to be about. Birds in their cloud kingdom, they're going to worry worry about, oh, where's my cloud kingdom going to go? And then they'll figure out, hey, there's always another place. There's always more clouds on the horizon. You know? So now that I have my where, my what's going to happen, my why it's going to happen, who's involved, and how it all goes down, I have my rough ideas, right? I'm just going to start off here. I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to write a little thing. Uh, something like the birds, the birds lived, and we can give the birds like a little name. We'll give them like, we'll give them uh, the purple birds, because I've never really seen a purple bird before. So I kind of like the idea of, of making that up. So I'll put the purple birds, the purple bird, 
birds <laughs> lived in a cloud kingdom. So I have that and then I'm just going to draw a little cloud, you know, a little cloud and maybe I want to have it kind of big. I don't know, I'm drawing very lightly. You might not be able to see my pencil marks and that's on purpose because I want to be able to go back and erase. And how do you draw lightly on a piece of paper with a pencil? You know, it's kind of tricky. My trick is I like to drop the pencil and just don't, don't press at all. Just let the weight of the pencil make marks. And you can't really see it, but they, they are making, I'm not pressing down at all. I'm just dragging the pencil along. And then that makes it really easy to erase later on. Because later on, I'm going to be using these markers. Whoa. I'm going to be using these markers to color my, my story. So, I have here my little cloud kingdom. And maybe below, we have our little, little human houses. So, I'm just going to draw a couple here. And, you know, I'm going kind of fast. You can kind of take your time, though, if you want. Take a little, take a little time. I'm just going to do a quick little draft. What a, what a, what the down, what the city down below could look like. Maybe it's just a small little town. But up here, that's our focus. That's the biggest thing on the page is going to be this cloud kingdom. Okay, and then, you know, what's the kingdom got to have? It's got to have some gates, I think. I think that's kind of nice. Some gates. I'm drawing everything lightly. You might not be able to see it, but trust me. It's there. And inside of the cloud, I'm just going to have this little section where you can kind of just see inside of the cloud. It's, it's a story. We get to illustrate it. We get to kind of make whatever we want out of it. So you wouldn't normally be able to see inside of a cloud, but I, I, want, to make, I want to make it so that you can in my story. And we have a little bird here. You know. <laughs> And birds kind of have this little of a shape. They have these little like little beaks. You got little eyes. And you know, they have the little wings. And if you want to, you can always go on the internet and look for references of what birds look like. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go on my phone here, or if you have a tablet or a Chromebook, you can always look that up. And I'm just going to type in birds. See if I can draw some inspiration here. Yeah, I really like these. Oh, look, there's a cardinal. It's the state bird of Ohio. <laughs> now, I really, really like a lot of these. And I'm just kind of looking at them and seeing kind of how they look like. I like that one a lot. I don't know if you can see it. I'll put it a little closer to the camera. Kind of a silly looking bird. I like it a lot though. So I think I like this one a lot. I'm going to kind of give, give this guy the same little haircut that this, this bird has going on. And I'm going to give him the same little cheeks. And I'm going to give him the same little beak. Now, in my bird, in my story, I can make him do, uh, you know, a different color. I don't necessarily have to do it exactly that color. And I'm going to give him a little, a little chair to sit on. Because I, I like the idea of having a, <laughs> having a bird on a chair here. You know, I kind of think that's kind of neat. All right. So we've got our bird. we got our chair. We've got our little, our little cloud kingdom, and we're going to put another bird in here. And what I like to do, and what a lot of painters do, is they have birds where they have the, the figures facing away from the camera. And if you think of your drawing as a scene in a movie, and there's a camera over here, it's a cool way to try and think of or imagine what you're going to draw. 
So we have here our little bird. He's going to be facing away from the camera and he's actually going to be looking at this bird. And maybe we put another bird here too. I'm going to make a bunch of birds, you know? We don't necessarily have to have only one. And this one's going to be looking over at this bird. So we have here our little birds. Okay. So the purple birds lived in a cloud kingdom. And I'll just put the little the dilemma they have. But Okay, and I put a comment for that. They worried it would go away, go away when it rained. So that's their dilemma right now. Okay, so. I kind of have everything laid out. I have my my words and I have my birds, birds and words. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color in these little birds. You know, I'm going to go ahead and go in, kind of go over my lines here real nice. And I kind of don't want to have purple beak kind of messed up there. That's okay though. I'm just going to go right in there with that orange. Yep, yep, yep. Not worried too much at all. And I like the idea of them having these green eyes. I don't know why, but I think that'd be kind of neat. And birds, they sort of have the same, sometimes they can have the same colored feet that they do their beaks. So I'm going to do that. And again, your story can be about anything you want to. You know, you can, you can have it be about anything you want it to be. Sometimes when you read a story, you get inspired and you want to go ahead and do something about worries or, you know, maybe you're feeling something else, you know, maybe you want to do something about birds. But for those of you who sort of like a little prompt or a little, uh, a little suggestion, you can always try and go off of what was read that day. So here we have, just working on this bird here. And I'm really enjoying it. This is just having a gold, good old time here. Yeah, he has his green eyes. And uh, his little cheek here, I think I'm gonna make that blue. Cause I don't necessarily have to be the same as my picture. I can kinda do whatever I want. It's my story, my illustration. I can kinda be whatever I want it to be. Okay, and here comes the tricky part. I'll let you see me going really slow and really small little strokes when it comes to the to the the parts that are close. I don't want to mix my colors in too much. Oh, looks like this marker is coming apart a little bit. I'm just going to pick that little bit off so it doesn't get too messy. Okay, and then I'm just going to larger sections like this. I don't necessarily have to go a little bit, a little bit. I can go with the side of my marker, not with the point, the side. I even grab the marker differently, like this. Like I was grabbing a toothbrush. And then I use the side of my marker, and just like that, I can cover so much more space. Check out that little trick. Isn't that cool? I can go ahead, use the side of my marker, and cover a lot of space. Sometimes you gotta get a little weird with how you grab it. And, uh, be able to use, use your hands creatively on how you're going to grab this pencil. So here I am, just continuing to color in this little section here. I want the bird to have the little legs here, kind of nonsensically going off of the page. And I'm just going to continue here. Now, I don't necessarily like how that's going here, so I'm going to clean that up a bit. Got that. I'm going to go here. Just continue to color in. Yep, color this in. I'm using the side of my marker 
to cover more ground. And you can see I have a little bit of white space here and sometimes that's okay if you want to be able to differentiate the neck and the body but over here in the body there's white space but there's not really any good reason for it to have white space so I'm gonna go back in and touch up that little bit of white space big part of having something look finished is being very very careful on how you color everything now if you don't want to do that that's okay that can be your choice but I like to so I'm going to <laughs> all right we have a couple more birds here all right here we go we're going to continue to draw these little birds again bigger sections I'm gonna use the side of my my marker I don't necessarily need to use the point if I use the side can really cover a lot more ground. And here we go. And you see, I could stop and color that bird's beak and its eyes, but I'm going to decide to draw this next bird over here in purple because I don't want to switch over my markers. I think sometimes it's good to do all the purple all at once. Then you can go back with your different colored, do all of that color all at once. And it helps you color and draw just a little bit faster. Now I'm gonna go in here and erase this, these pencils. See if that can come out a little bit so that the marker doesn't necessarily protect it. And here I'm gonna go and just do a little green eye here, a little green eye there. You know, and just kinda have fun with this. I'm just gonna get, just tidy up a few more little sections here. Okay, so I have my birds. I have this little chair here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some blue outlines and very very thin 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 little bit of outlines just to sort of make it feel light like a cloud would be you know I want it to look kind of very cloudy so I might add some squiggly lines you know have a little bit of a little bit of a floaty section to it and I'm trying to make it all look very very cloudy here you know very very light now clouds will often have the bottom part be very dark compared to the, the top half now why would that be why do you think the bottom of a cloud is darker than the top that's right, it's because there's sun coming from the top and the bottom is left in shadow. If you ever look down at, at, at the ground when you're outside, you'll see your shadow. It's kind of neat. So, sometimes when you're drawing, it's good to consider the light. How is the light hitting your drawing, the people in your drawing, you know? Maybe you want to add some shadows underneath people. I might go ahead and do that, actually. I'm going to draw some little bit of shadows underneath my birds. Now, it looks a little bit messy here, so I'm going to go ahead and erase those pencil marks so I kind of get a very clear direction of what I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just erasing those pencil marks. Getting all of that pencil out of here and you see it's really easy to erase the pencil marks because I drew very lightly check this out I didn't draw this so lightly so you can still kind of see the when because I really really scratched it in there but you see the other parts are pretty much all gone you can't really see them again the trick to drawing lightly 
is to not press down on the pencil at all. You just want to rest the pencil on the page and glide it around. It's a little tricky, but if you can do it, it's going to make erasing so much easier. So here we go. I'm erasing away. Erase, erase, erase. Just to kind of clear up the image here a little bit. I'm going to check if we're recording still. We are. That's great. Okay. And I'm going to give my little birds a shadow here. A little bit of a shadow for my birds. Kind of give them a little more weight. Like if they're real birds, they're going to have real shadows, right? Am I right? <laughs> so here I am. I'm just giving them little shadows and seeing if that doesn't make them look a little more real. Here we are. A little tricky here. Trying to get really close to, but not cover their little feet here. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to really do that much to it, but I like to. So, we've got ourselves here, the cloud kingdom. I might actually bring this cloud up into the letters, you know, that's part of it. And then I'm going to have this sort of be a cutaway here, so we understand this inside the cloud a little circle and outside we'll have the door now it's, it's all on one page it's all two-dimensional but I'm trying to give the illusion that my page is three-dimensional that's all a lot of drawing is it's an illusion it's making people believe that your image has some depth to it really we all know it's on a flat piece of paper but it's kind of cool to know that you can make it look as if it's in space, in reality. So we have here our little bird kingdom. And I don't know, I think to make sure that this inside looks a little more different from the outside, I'm just going to add little lines here and that will darken up the space just the tiniest bit so you can see how the inside is going to look just a little more like it's inside and the outside is going to look just a little more like it's outside. Now, Hopefully this works. Only time will tell. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, kind of see that inside part is starting to look a little different than the outside. And the little bit of lines, kind of like a little cheat code to making things darker without having to color all of it. Sometimes it's good just to color just a little bit. And you get the idea. That's on the inside here. I'll just draw a couple more here. A couple more lines. You can kind of get a feel for it. Don't want it to get too crazy with it though. Because then it'll look just a little bit too messy. But again, that's just my style. If you want to make it look a little messy, that's cool too. Here we go. So we got our little cloud kingdom here. And maybe because we know that it's going to rain, maybe we put a little drop. A, little, a couple of little drops here. Okay. And then I'm going to draw this little town below here. Here we go. We're drawing our little bit of a town below here. Right. We got the, the hills. Then I'm going to draw these little red houses. Yep. And I'm drawing them a little bit 3D, 
check that out. So a way you can draw something 3D is you start with a square, then you bring the lines back. Normally you'd bring them to a vanishing point, but that's for another day. I'll explain vanishing points one other day. Right now all we need to worry is that all of the, the angles could be the same. And that is called, I believe, I actually don't remember the name of that perspective, but it's forced perspective where all of the lines go back in the same direction. I think it's forced somehow, but I don't remember the exact name for it. I'm gonna add it into the video. But here we are, we have our little houses. I'm gonna give the roofs a different color than, than the, the side of the houses. We'll have ourselves a little situation here. Here we go. Here we are. I can put a little bit of a path here, a little road that goes along here. So I'm going to go past this house, behind that house. See, and a good way to do a line behind something is go, you float your pencil over and then you come back down. So I'm going to go here, float right over and then come down right where I want to. See, I'll do that a couple more times here with some, some of these green lines that are coming in. And with this road, I'm going to do, I don't know that I'm going to color it in. I'm going to see what it looks like if I just leave it white. But here I go. I kind of have all my drawings done, so I'm going to go ahead and all the marker drawings done. So I'm going to erase all the really, really light pencil lines. And they're going to come right off the page because I did not press down hard. Again, if I press down hard, it's going to be really hard to get rid of those lines. Now, what kind of color rooftop do we want these? houses to have. I kind of like them white. I kind of like them white. So we're going to see if I can make that look a little more on purpose and outline it in black. So you can say, no, no, I'm, I meant to leave it white. I like it like that. See? And you see how this looks just a little more finished if we outline it in black? So I want you all to really take your time with these, these illustrations. I really want to see them at the end of the week. And we can try and share them with the, the, the rest of the people who are watching the YouTube channel. And I think you guys are going to come up with really great, great illustrations. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. No, not really. I don't have bones. I'm made out of air. <laughs> Uh, it's just a joke, of course. Okay. So I have all my little houses outlined. They're looking pretty nice. Then I'm going to go in with my green. And since I have such a small, small little marker, I'm not going to go crazy and try and fill all everything in like this. That would take way too long. So what I'm going to do is just fill in really solid right underneath the houses again because they have shadows right the sun's somewhere up here doesn't really show up right now but we all know it exists we all know the sun is out there and then for the rest of this I'm just gonna do little lines I'm just gonna do little lines that go all the way across and you can see when I'm coloring and I'm coming up to a little so here's where the camera starts recording and I was just going to go ahead and explain a couple more things. I ended up using colored pencil on some of the sky there just to cover up more space and make it a little easier for me. I also like the softness of the colored pencil so feel free to use a bunch of different mediums. Maybe you want to use pencil, colored pencil, marker, crayons, really doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do to make marks on the page. If you end up using watercolor, 
you will probably find out pretty quickly that it'll warp your page. So unless you want a page that's really warped, you probably don't want to use watercolor. Maybe you want to experiment with that though. Well, I'd be careful. Either way, um, I guess this is the finished product and I really look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. I only have one page here, but you can see that in the beginning I had a couple of different ideas for how the story was going to go. So I'd encourage you all to do the pages that you want to do and see if you can get a fully illustrated copy. Really take your time with it. All right, well, look forward to seeing you soon and seeing all your beautiful drawings. Transit Arts. <laughs> <laughs>